Hi, this is Kenny Ling, and we're going to talk about naming vectors, particularly the direction for vectors. We're going to start off with this system for non-forces. That means your distance, your displacements, uh, accelerations, momentums, anything like that. And so if the vector is right along one of these directions, we would simply call it do and the direction like this will be due west but unfortunately sometimes we're not so lucky that it's exactly on one of the main directions that's somewhere in between like the others that i've drawn here so let's take a look at this green one so it's a displacement 10 meters it gives us a direction but what are we going to name it it's going to be 10 meters at and then we got to give it a name. Well, we've got an angle here. It's six degrees from the east line going up. So it's six degrees north of east. North of the east line. So we could call this 60 degrees north of east. Well, if that's 60 degrees, that means this angle's got to be 30 degrees. So another way we can name this vector is 10 meters at 30 degrees. Now, with that angle, we're going from the north towards the east. So we're heading east. So it's 30 degrees east of the north line or east of north. Let's take a look at the blue one here. Same way, we'll just take a look at this. So it's going to be 6 meters per second. This one's going to be a velocity vector at... And again, we're starting off the north line and we're going west this time, 20 degrees. So it'll be 20 degrees west of the north line. By that same token, if that's 20, then this has got to be 70. So an alternate way of naming it is 6 meters per second at 70 degrees. We're going up from the west line to get to that vector. North of west. Now I actually prefer these that go to the x-axis. So I would actually prefer the 70 degrees north of west for this one and the 60 degrees north of east for that one. When we get into actually calculating it's nice to have uh, the right angle with the x-axis. For this red one well, it exactly splits this quadrant. So that would be 8 meters at 45 degrees south of east. If we kind of stick to keeping that as our base. Or it would be 8 meters at 45 degrees east of south. Either way would work. Now... We used to go 8 meters southeast, and that would let us know that we're in between things perfectly. But we don't really do that, that whole north by northwest and stuff like that. We don't use that system anymore. Now we kind of do more something like this or some other alternate system. Let's take a look at forces. Forces use a slightly different method. In where for non-forces, there was two ways to name a vector for it. For forces, there's really only one. We always start off at zero degrees and go around counterclockwise until we get to the vector. So this first one that I've got as 8 newtons, we already got the angle with respect to zero. So it's 8 newtons at 70 degrees. Easy enough. But let's look over at that red one. The red one is all the way over here in the third quadrant. So to name it, that would be 12 newtons at, but we got to go from here all the way around to that one. So that's 90, 180 degrees, plus another 40. So 180 plus 40 gives us 220 degrees. So that would be 12 newtons at 220 degrees. For the green one, we got that same problem. We're not going to just say it's at 30 degrees. 
we are going to go around all the way until we get to there. So that's going to be, well, all the way around is 360. We're just short of that by 30 degrees. So that's 330 degrees all the way around to it. So that's how you name those. Those are named individually from zero counterclockwise around until you get to the vector. Well, there's some alternate ways that we can name vectors. So here's one that I've seen that I don't really use that may be common for you is this one. Let's look at this green one. It looks very similar to that first system that I showed you except this. This will be named 9 meters at north 30 degrees east. So you're going to go from the north line 30 degrees east to it. If we look at the red one the red one would be 11 meters at north, but we got to go from here all the way down to here. So that's 90 plus another 60. So that would be 11 meters north, 150 degrees east. For the blue one, it would be 3 meters at north. That's 10, that means this has got to be 80, 80 degrees west. I prefer the, actually the first system that I showed you for non-forces. But this is one that I've seen this or something similar. Let's look at a coordinate system that actually pilots use. So have you ever wondered how a pilot knows which runway to land on? Well, it all comes from direction and vectors. Pilots use a system similar to forces, except that north is zero degrees, or 360. And they go around clockwise to whichever vector they're going for. First one, the green, then that is simply 60 degrees. Now, for the runway that they would land, it would be zero, 06. They drop off the bottom, the back zero. So they just use that one. They put a zero up front so you won't get confused with that being a nine. But let's say on the blue one, going around, that's going to be 100 degrees. So that will be runway 10. If the runway was straight along south, then that would be runway 18 where we've got this one. So again, you go all the way around to here, just like what we did with the forces, except now north is going to be zero. So we're at 180 plus another 40. So this would be 220 degrees. So that would be runway 22. They simply drop off the bottom, the back end zero. What if we really get mathy? There's something known as vector notation. That can get pretty ugly to start off with, but if you get used to it, it's actually pretty handy. They use what's called unit vectors. And we got I hat, J hat, and K hat. I is really just in the X direction. Positive I, negative I. And it's just one unit. J is in the Y. And K is in the Z. So that would be coming out towards you. So if I've got these drawn right here, what would be their vector notation? Well, there's actually two ways we can do it. Let's call this R. So that one, R could equal. I normally use brackets like this, but I've seen some use what looks like norm, normal coordinate system. But this one is over 4 and up 2. So over 4, so that would be 4. Up 2, that would be 2. And... Let's just keep everything in a plane so we don't worry about K. So it will look like that. Or 4I plus 2J. Now if we want to talk about the, the K going up and down, it would simply be written as 4, 2, 0. Or 4I 
plus 2j, uh, well, let's say 0k. You wouldn't really have to do that, but we would do that. Now, that'll make the notation look more proper. Um, let's look at the blue one. It's, again, the x component's 2, y component looks like 6. So let's call this one uh, h. So h would equal, we're over 2, but it's this way, so it's negative, and we're up 6. Again, that would be minus 2i plus 6j to get that one. For the red, let's make it, uh, let's call it C. C, we go over, looks like we're about at 4, so negative 4, and we're down 5, negative 5. It would look like that, or you can write it as 4i plus negative, well, actually, minus 5j. Let's make that cleaner. Negative 4i minus 5j. It looks something like that. This notation is really handy when we get into more vector-type math systems. But the first two systems is plenty adequate to get started with. This is when you're going to get into more advanced systems where you have to worry about this. But this component system makes it really easy to do math with vectors. All right. Thank you. Hope this helped. Good luck on naming vectors. Goodbye.